Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories and Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories and today's topic is Something to make you feel better. Feeling overwhelmed? Join the Cultivating Calm study. Cultivating Calm is a research study of trauma-informed yoga, delivered online. You are invited to try out this slow and gentle practice in the comfort of your own home. The purpose of Cultivating Calm is to learn whether trauma-informed yoga is helpful for stress and anxiety during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are 18 years or older, you are eligible to participate at no cost. Cultivating Calm can be completed in about one hour, including a 45-minute video of trauma-informed yoga. To participate, all you need is an internet connection. No yoga equipment is needed. To participate, or to learn more about the study, please visit, https colon slash slash redcap dot link slash nunem underscore com. More Christmas Blues So I came back home to an empty house. My ex took all the kids' presents to his apartment because he said he bought them. This has been the worst two months of my life, I am at my end. People on here help me look at his leaving as something different, but now I have no presents for my kids and zero money. He has left me high and dry, while providing for his new woman that he cheated on me with. I really wish that I would just not wake up anymore, I can't handle anymore. Today I gave up on being alive. Depression 1. From sunrise to sunset I have done nothing but sleep. My body aches and I feel no desire to continue being alive. Every day feels like a long list of tasks I'm forced to complete for the sole reason that I'm able to do it again tomorrow. And it's pointless. Nothing I do brings me any joy, my only motivation to do anything is to satisfy the guilt I feel from not doing it. But the longer I go the less I care. Today, I just feel like laying in bed. Because nothing I could do would be worth it. Even days when I do stuff, I still want to die. I want to not be alive, but I'm too scared. So I'm left suffering through my pointless tasks. Please help me. I've talked to a therapist and the best she could give me is that I need to have hope things will get better. I've talked to a psychiatrist and gone through countless medications. I'm not sure if I can be helped anymore. Turning 28 in less than 3 months and my life is nowhere near where I want it to be. You know that episode in Friends where Rachel says everyone I know is either getting married or getting pregnant or getting promoted while she's working at the coffee house. I feel the same. I'm 27F and I'm turning 28 early March and I feel so behind in life. I was engaged this year but my fiancé ended it 3 months ago, and since then my whole life feels like it's been thrown off what I had imagined. I have ambitions but I'm too damn sad and lonely to try and accomplish anything. All my friends are getting married and becoming mothers and I'm just, too depressed to do anything besides go to work and do the minimum I need to survive. I'm also struggling with an eating disorder and I feel like I'm nowhere near where I would like to be. Note, I am in therapy. It helps but it's extremely slow. My therapist can only meet me bi-weekly so things are taking a while. The co-worker I called a racist fuck to his face is now my supervisor. So I started working at a sales job a few months ago, the guy next to me was friendly at first, I was in his office one day and we were having a conversation. Out of nowhere he starts talking about how Asians are all animals and deserves to be caged, I guess he just assumed I was racist too because I was white. So I interrupted him and said I'm sorry I didn't know you were a racist piece of shit and before he could respond I left the office and went to mine. We haven't talked since. Today at the sales meeting we were told he was our new supervisor of our little department the whole time he was looking at me. This job is great and pays well and I'm about to be fucked. Sucks. Help. Please tw slash 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 suicide encouragement phobias and bullying so let me give info i'm a non-binary pansexual in middle school with a thing i call sparkles social and ixty sparkles i'm also the most unliked in my school as in i get picked on constantly 
it doesn't help when my parents are abusers, as in like physically hitting me sometimes and gaslighting, etc. But a year ago, I was trying to talk to someone about random shit and little did I know someone was eavesdropping on my convo. I asked to go away in a little harsh manner. Like in this tone can you go away, get out of my CONV station, I'm sorry for my grammar BTW. And she got all defensive and said I called her a bastard when I never said that. And then she said ugh, no wonder why nobody likes you, maybe if you take a swan dive off a cliff you could get a life and they started laughing. Like why tf would you be laughing at that, you just told someone to go fucking oof themselves. It was a year ago but it still hurts ngl. I'm very sorry for this post and if I'm being overdramatic, but I just needed to vent. That's all. Free tools and tips from a PhD psychologist. Hi everyone. My wife has started a new YouTube channel to give back to those who either cannot afford therapy or would like some extra tools and tips for coping with everyday life. Please search working on it with Dr. A on YouTube and we hope we can positively impact one person, and that would make all the difference. Thank you. I was fired. I knew it was coming, but it's still upsetting. I have gig work to fall back on, but it's not a permanent solution and I can't start reasonably until after the holidays. So I'll be nearly half month salary behind in January. I could use a pep talk, and maybe some ideas. I know the holidays can be difficult so I'm here for you. To the lovely soul who needs to read it. I know the holiday season can be rough and sucky. Sometimes it feels lonely and cold. Colder than the frost that is outside. But you and me, we can light a fireplace. You're adorable. Doesn't matter if you're friendless or full of friends. Thin, awkward, fat, depressed, anxious or struggling with sickness. Don't let the world tell you otherwise. I am on a winter break and I didn't have much to do. So if you need a friend, a shoulder, or some kind words with a stranger I'm here for you. Take care. Christmas Blues I need some kind words please, my BD slash husband left me about 6 weeks ago and I'm devastated. We have one child together and he has only seen her once. He is more interested in impressing his new woman than speaking to his own daughter. I am trying to stay strong but I have no support system, my parents are gone and my siblings are addicts. I just feel so alone and unloved, I don't understand how he could throw our lives away for casual sex or as he says an accident. I know people say to go out and get to know other people but I just can't enter the dating scene yet. I'm just so messed up mentally right now, and lonely. I never knew I could be this alone and at Christmas time. I'm trying to stay strong for my babies but when I look at them I remember him, I remember him in everything I see. I feel useless and unwanted, ugly, unworthy, and a failure. I want to just run away. I am so sorry for the long rant, I had to put this out into the world. I feel like I don't belong anywhere. Hi I'm 17 M I feel like I don't belong anywhere ever since my ex left me then she made all my friends choose her side it's been since June I spent all of summer alone I transferred to another school and it feels like no one likes me here the other day some girl told me no one wanted me here and that I should leave and go back to my old school and that hurt a lot I feel like I have no one and my family doesn't help me either I just feel so lonely and sad and I wish things were better for me. Just had my fourth panic attack today. I'm currently on holiday, trying to relax and boom a panic attack hits me just as I'm in the hotel and trying to relax on my phone. This is the third evening, on vacation, I've been hit with one. My dad and I then went out for food, and as we were walking I was hit with another one. I really hate this. When I'm back home I'm going to organize a counselor slash therapist, but God, I hope I don't have panic attacks forever now. I've just come out of a very stressful period at my job, going in every day and working long hours. I'm not sure but I think my body is being resistant to me actually relaxing. Is that a thing? 
I should have taken leave in June when my work burnout really started but decided to wait till Christmas, which means I've been running on empty for a while. I'm slowly catching up on sleep, but perhaps other things such as my mind will take longer? Anyone here had bad panic attacks? MMFBX Stuck and lost in life Hello I-22F, am writing because I have officially hit rock bottom and I really don't know where to go from here. The past few years have been incredibly hard for me. I was 18 and attending college back in the 2018 to 2019 school year, about 5 hours away from my family. This was my first time living on my own. At first I enjoyed it, but I fell into a huge depression shortly after I started school. I hated my college, I hated the tiny town it was in, I hated that I had absolutely no friends, no boyfriend, and no family around me. At the end of the 2019 school year, my mom told me my stepdad had accepted a job offer in Nashville, Tennessee and he was going to take it. She asked me if I wanted to come with them. I said yes because I wanted to try something new. I moved there in July 2019. I was doing good at first. I had a job at Target, was making good money, in therapy. But by January 2020, everything was a mess. I had to quit my job due to not being able to drive and moving with my family 45 minutes away. I had to go on a leave of absence since I was having orthopedic surgery in March, I have mild cerebral palsy, hence the difficulty driving and the surgery. The night before the surgery, a huge tornado tore the roof off of our new house while we were asleep. We barely made it out. In the nearly two years that have followed, I have struggled immensely. I have had huge fights with my parents, my brother, my cousins who I look up to, and they are all done with me. We moved to Florida three months ago, and I still do not drive. I have a measly part-time job where I make $10 an hour, barely making $350 every two weeks. The fighting has gotten worse, and my anger has been out of control. When I get angry I become abusive and mean. I got into a huge fight with my mom last night and said some terrible things to her. She told me today that she has not changed her mind on me moving out, she has been telling me for a while I need to, and now, I don't have until summer like she originally said, I have until after the holidays, and the only reason I'm not out on my ass right now is because she doesn't want to put me out during Christmas. I'm at a loss what to do. I don't love Florida, but I have a full-time job I am starting soon that would allow me to move out. I could go back to Washington, where I lived before Tennessee and where my dad is living, but he and I argue all the time. My depression is at an all-time high, my anxiety is too, and I'm generally just hating life. I have suicidal thoughts constantly, and I want to harm myself, but I'm too afraid of dying. I need help. Thank you. I haven't been able to get advice from anyone, and I'm incredibly lost. I want to do whatever is humanly possible for me to get out of this situation. I'm in desperate need of some kind words, and maybe some harsh truth. I'm at the end of my rope at this point, and I don't know where else to turn to. I didn't know there was a name for it, but apparently I identify as an introvert. I have zero friends, zero family, zero places to go, no transportation, and a disability. I have a knee injury that keeps me from walking long distances, and I live in an area where there's not really any form of public transportation, Alabama, I have a very old phone I can only use on Wi-Fi, and nothing more than a backpack of clothes, and an out-of-date license. The harsh reality is that this is not an exaggeration, besides what I stated before my only belongings are a portable two, person hiking tent, a very light jacket, and a pair of $15 slip-resistant shoes. One wrapped with duct tape because the sole is hanging off. I'm just recently homeless. I've always been a hard-working individual, and it's just unbelievable that I would have been dropped on my nuts this hard. I've always been the type to help others and try to make people laugh while I hide my own issues, so even asking for help on the street sends me into a panic attack. 
literally. I'm constantly freezing and in pain from the cold and trying to walk as far as I can, and it's just getter the better of me. As a matter of fact, waking up and moving feels like such a chore. I'm physically and mentally drained, I have nobody to even talk to, and I'm completely miserable. To be completely honest I threw my pocket knife in a field the day before yesterday because of thoughts that just popped in my head out of nowhere. Thoughts I would have never taken seriously before, because I've never been suicidal. I was sharpening my knife on a broken coffee cup I found on the side of the road, and had a serious thought I should just jab it into my neck and end it, because there's no hope in sight, which scares the shit out of me because it felt like I wasn't in control of my own thoughts. I've been down before, and most people would say that I have had a very difficult life, mental slash physical abuse, abandonment, loneliness, toxic childhood, you know the story, but that's never made me feel this way. I constantly find myself sitting and just staring off into space, while the most horrific thoughts play on repeat in my mind. I have nobody to turn to, and I'm only on Reddit because I can't make a Facebook or much else without a phone number, aside from this phone not being capable of much anyways. I know it's probably bluntness like that, that reduce Reddit to nothing more than my personal journal and keep people from offering advice, but any words of advice, at all, would mean so much to me right now, even if just a subreddit or a website or something. I've posted in multiple subreddits and it hasn't amounted to much, but I know that's because this is a hard problem to offer insight on, and not because people just don't care. I know I'm not the only one who's been here, and I don't mean to rant, so to anyone reading this, thank you. If you've been here before and made it out, you're an incredibly strong person. God bless. I have a life-threatening neurological condition called spontaneous intracranial hypotension, brain fluid leak, and I could have my treatment cancelled if the UK locks down over Omicron. The condition I have is called spontaneous intracranial hypotension. It's not related to blood pressure, but low intracranial pressure. It's basically the opposite of hydrocephalus, too much water in your brain. There's a massive tear in my spine so I quite literally have a dehydrated brain. Neurons tend to freak out if they don't have water, so I'm in pain constantly, and I had an epidural blood patch that was partially successful for a while but it looks like I'll need more procedures done. The condition is life-threatening because when you don't have enough liquid in your brain, it causes the veins in your brain to expand with blood, this can cause fatal blood clots, strokes, seizures, blindness, and other complications. I knew a boy who had the same condition, he went to bed one day seeming fine except for a bad headache, which he had every day for five years. When his parents came to wake him up the next morning, he was dead. This condition is so debilitating that I've been in the ER because of having a mental health crisis and I'm on more medications than I'd like to admit, just to stop myself from going insane from the symptoms, which is like a never-ending migraine multiplied by three. When I had my first blood patch I could tell the consultant was eager to get me in for surgery before they locked us down again. At one point, I got desperate enough that I paid almost £300 for a 30-minute telephone appointment with a private consultant. There's seven deaths from Omicron in 25,000 Omicron cases last time I checked. That's a case fatality rate of 0.02%. This is not the same virus as the one that killed five people per 100 cases which originated in Wuhan City. Yet right before Christmas we're being bombarded in the media with threats that the UK is going to lock down again. Because of a virus that is almost an order of magnitude milder than common flu. There will never be zero cases, a lockdown won't make it go away. I've been double jabbed, I don't go outside much as it is because of being in pain constantly, all I want is to feel whole again. I'm not even 30 yet, I have a whole life ahead of me, I do not want to die early of something that is so easy to treat. I can't find a job. I feel so desperate. I'm currently a senior in college and I need to find a job before I graduate. I've applied to at least 50 jobs by now and I'm currently going through the Fortune 500 company list because that's how desperate I am. 
I've missed the fall recruiting season and I don't even know if there will be a spring recruiting season for next year. Literally all the companies I've searched up have ended recruitment for new grads months ago. For the past new months, I've just been receiving rejection emails or emails informing me that their recruitment cycle is over. Moreover, I can only apply to full-time new grad roles because most companies won't accept me for an internship. I feel like absolute shit because I've worked so hard to maintain a high GPA and I know that if someone gave me a chance, I'll surpass their expectations. Even my professors agree that I'm qualified for these entry-level positions, but I can't believe that my timing is so bad that no company wants me. I literally don't know what to do at this point. I'm on the brink of tears looking through my spreadsheet of my company recruitment tracker. I can't apply for grad school because it's too late. I have a 3.97 GPA that I worked my ass off for but it's literally worth nothing. What do I do? I hurt the person I cared about the most. I dated someone who I held close to my heart, and I was the one who hurt her. I have autism spectrum disorder and I block off contact from things that stressed me out and I did that when I got mad over something stupid and she thought I was guilt tripping her. Because she couldn't communicate what she did wrong, I kept doing things that hurt her and she couldn't tell me. She told me after the breakup when I reached out what I did wrong and I owned up because I want her to be happy and if it doesn't include me that's okay. I can't help but feel regret and self-hatred realizing what I did earlier and she is still considerate of my feelings and being friends after what I did to her. I made a promise to her that I can change, and I wouldn't make that promise if those words couldn't hold true. I don't know how to forgive myself. I hurt the one person I truly cared about and there is a good possibility of there not being a second chance. I have been working out and weightlifting my anger but all I feel is hatred toward me for hurting her. I know where I went wrong and I want to change but I cannot forgive myself for the pain I caused her. All I feel is pain, and I do not know what to do. Make me feel better. It makes me feel really depressed when I watch a show that was finished slash cancelled long ago. I just want to know if my favorite character is okay damn it. Like a decade or more. It's a similar feeling to when you check out your friend's MySpace and it says they were last online over 500 weeks ago and that's the only means you had of contacting them. It makes me feel depressed wondering what those characters' lives are like right now. Like would they have had to go through the whole COVID pandemic? Are they sad or even angry that their show is no longer running and everyone's forgetting about them? Would they start getting old and dying? What if they got so upset that their show was cancelled that they all killed themselves or something? Those are questions that can never be answered and it just makes me sad. Maybe my favorite character killed himself years ago and he's long gone because his show was cancelled, maybe his mental health isn't good because his creator abandoned him. He got me through some tough times in my life he was like a friend to me. I just hope he's okay and well somewhere. I'm offering a free in text can be an app, preferably I'm Sage, therapeutic slash counseling sessions for people that need it. I know what it is like to hit absolute rock bottom and have no money, no friends, no family, and nothing going for you in life. I know how badly people just need someone to talk to, to listen to them, to understand them so they don't feel like they're drowning. I don't want people to give up the way I almost did multiple times, I want to give back the strength I gave myself to other people to hopefully make the world a better place one smile at a time. So DM me for this service, it's free. I don't require payment, there are no strings, I just want to help. 7 A's and A B plus in my first semester of college. I was one point away from an A, and I'm too scared to tell my parents. I apologize due to any grammatical errors as English isn't my first language, but here it goes. I was one point away from an A in Bio 2, and my family already thinks I have a 4.0 but I'm too scared to tell them that it's actually a 3.87. I'm taking pre-med and neuroscience recs and my parents had high expectations of me based off of my performance in high school. I'd like to hear your experiences as freshmen in college, if you're okay with sharing them. Of course.
What would you tell your parents if you were in this situation? I'm kinda nervous, and mad at myself because I gave in to the burnout as the last final exam approached, which happened to be the biology test. How would you get over that one point? Grades don't determine one's worth but that was how things were where I grew up and I unfortunately am a product of that way of thinking. It's a work in progress. Thank you in advance. Failed a programming test in college I studied a lot for. It's my first semester at Computer Eng and even though I did all of the exercises that were assigned and understood them quite well for some reason I couldn't get a good grade in the test. Seeing how everyone did relatively well makes me feel extremely dumb, not to mention that I feel as if there's no real sense of progress when it comes to programming for me given the bad grades. I promise I study a lot, usually 3-4 hours of programming alone every single day. I know life has its ups and downs but having to retake a class feels, terrible to say the least. Is my ex playing mind games with me? Just right at the 3 months mark after the breakup she unblocked me on Instagram and after 2 weeks or so she changed her profile settings to private, do you think she was waiting for me to make a move, even though she's the one that ended things? Dude wants to beat me up. So, situation is, I lived with this guy's on and off again girlfriend for a couple years along with 3 other people, so there were 5 of us in the house total. Anyway. The girl was not a good housemate and as a house we decided to ask her to leave. However, instead of taking any accountability for the reasons that we asked her to leave, bad cat owner and not paying rent or making any plan to, she just blamed me for having it in for her and for getting her kicked out of the house. In the end she left and ended up in a much better spot for her but I think still refusing to take any accountability. So now this guy that she sees on and off and who she has a very toxic relationship with, they are constantly fighting, breaking up, and getting back together, has it in for me. I was playing a show last weekend and he was working at the venue I was playing and at the end of the show he came up to me in front of a bunch of people and started berating me and chewing me out for kicking his girlfriend out of the house. Then he threw beer on me and threw a beer can against the wall and made a bunch of threats, including saying, I know where you live and something really bad is going to happen to you and that really bad thing is going to be me. I didn't want him to or ask for him to but he got fired from his job for this incident. So now I'm worried he has it even more in for me. Based on how mad he was over his girlfriend, I can't imagine how angry he is not that he's been fired. He called me the day after the incident but I didn't know it was him at the time and I didn't answer but I want to reach out to him now and see if there's a way to smooth things over and for him to feel like the situation is resolved so that he doesn't want to kill me every time he sees me. For what it's worth, his girlfriend ended up in a much better situation for herself after she left our house. 26 and feeling trapped and depressed. So this is a long one so I'm sorry in advance, posting about stuff is a first for me but I'm not really sure what else to do. I'm at a point where I just feel trapped or somewhat stuck in a loop of things going wrong. I have yet to have a truly healthy and fulfilling relationship that doesn't boil down to me being there at a single call but rarely having even close to the same level of return. A few years ago I got a permanent disability, the details of which I don't really want to get into, that has prevented me from working or doing a lot of the things I'd like to. It requires an injection every two weeks that I can't miss or it will stop working and I will require surgery that make my life worse. For a few years now at least I've been dealing with gender dysphoria and have little to no ability to feel better let alone the ability to share it with more than a couple people. Not even family knows. That also makes me even less sought out in terms of a partner and means I really don't get treated the way I wish I were or included in things I wish I could be. For the past few months I've had to stay with family because the apartment I lived at was sold, forcing me to leave. There's a bit of a housing crisis going on around here too so even if I were healthy and working two full-time jobs it sadly wouldn't even be enough to live in a dumpy little basement apartment or in some cases even rent a room. I really don't feel like I belong anywhere anymore. I'm checking all the boxes, talking to a therapist, went to a psychiatrist, 
been trying a variety of antidepressants despite being scared to do so because I've seen them change others and myself before. I try to keep busy, find things I enjoy, all those things. But at the end of the day I just feel alone. A few months ago I really bottomed out so bad it affected my vitals. I've been having small breakdowns off and on and trying my best to hide everything for fear of acceptance as well as not worrying others. I don't blame others because I know life sucks but I want to feel like I matter and less trapped. I want to be able to do even the simple things that I can't with my condition. I want to have a place to live without being on assistance and leeching off of people. I want to have somebody who loves me and doesn't withhold support slash affection, expect me to be okay all the time and get upset if I'm not, only come around when they need emotional slash financial help. Being angry all the time, hitting me, lying to others about me, or cheating on me. I'm tired of dropping everything all the time for somebody who breaks my heart. I want to be okay with my body and actually love who I am but I just don't. I'm not able to really be the person I am. I can't tell people who I really am inside and it makes me cry at night. I don't feel valid in my sexual identity. Do I even count as as lesbian? I got called a pretty girl over text by a girl who never even met me and it made me so happy I just closed myself in a room and quietly cried. I have so many people I worry about right now, even my ex who I haven't heard from since lending them money for bills when they called me in a panic about fear of being evicted over the summer, they said they didn't know who else to call. I can't handle it all. I know it's selfish to say it but I really wish somebody would save me for once. Having a rough day. Gotta go have a call with a family member where I pretend I'm okay after a really long day fully of little bad things one after another after another. Today has been a marathon of fuck-ups, failure, and rejection. Can some kind person remind me that maybe I'm not a pile of rotting garbage? I feel so behind in life. I graduated uni at 24 but due to some sad circumstances, I just finally found my feet in life at 27. I feel so bad about the years I've lost and I don't even have a support system. My friends are now strangers who look down on me and my family only calls to remind me that I need to get married because I'm almost 30 and will reach menopause soon. I wish I could turn back time. I wish I could get my mid-20s back but it's gone forever. I didn't achieve nothing while my uni mates and ex-friends were slash are building successful careers and families. Things are finally falling into place but it still hurts loudly crying face loudly crying face how do I stop feeling like this? I get very annoyed and kind of jealous when people start sharing the same interests with me. I get very annoyed and kind of jealous when people start sharing the same interests with me, only because such topics become popular. It also applies to people who I do not like, or people who annoy me in some sense. You are not worthy of liking it that is in my head. What annoys me too, is when people who got introduces in such topics start to interfere with me and my friends who knew about that stuff for much longer, even if these newbies are my friends. But on the other hand, when someone starts liking or doing the same thing as me, because of me, because I told him about my interests etc., then I like it. Sound like an extreme inferiority complex to me, but it could be something else. What do you think? Am I the only one who gets irritated with this? Lost my best friend. Work friend, but I guess just co-worker now. His wife, who also works with us, decided we were having an emotional affair because we talked a lot. As friends, and only friends, seeing as I'm a lesbian with sub-zero interest in married men, but that didn't matter to her apparently. He kept telling me it was fine, only for me to find out he was lying to her about taking to me and deleting messages and phone conversations. He told me he wouldn't just stop being my friend because of her, but here we are. He needs to stop taking to me for their healing process so that's it I guess. I'm not about to hurt myself more by waiting around. I wish I hadn't confided in him so much. I wish I hadn't been his friend in the first place. She wants to talk to me, but I don't want to talk to her, 
and I'm afraid if she tries I'll say something cruel that I'll regret because I never did anything wrong and I don't deserve this. Sorry it's so scattered, it's very fresh and I'm hurting. Feeling lonely and worthless in college. Hi. I'm a college student who recently turned 20. I have depression and anxiety. Currently, I feel very lost and sad. The biggest issue I'm facing is that I have no friends. I have no one to talk to. It's not like I don't interact with others. I've tried many times, but I just can't connect with them. We don't have the same energies if that makes sense. My 20th birthday was two days ago and I spent it all alone. This year has been very tough. I experienced racism for the first time and it was traumatic. That racist incident really affected me. Also the other day, I thought that I had finally found a group of people I could hang out with until one of them said something homophobic, which especially hurt since I'm bi. I've been struggling to make friends for the last few years. Things began to go downhill in my last two years of school. I guess a lot of people found me boring. I've been asked why I'm so nice, which I find weird because I was taught that we must be kind to everyone as we never know what a person going through. Another big issue is my pitted acne scarring. It really brings down my confidence. While I've managed to get my acne under control, the scars serve as a painful reminder of the teasing and pain during my early teenage years. I also lost almost 50 pounds over the last one and a half years due to starving myself, my relationship with food is better now. To get better, I meet with a college counselor. She has been of immense help. However, I will go to a therapist from next month onwards outside the campus as my needs are too severe to be addressed by college counseling services. I also got a job as a computer science tutor which forces me to interact with people. I've started taking antidepressants and will have a follow-up appointment with my doctor tomorrow. I plan to visit a dermatologist over the break to deal with my scars. Still, I feel hopeless. Things don't seem like they are getting better. I feel lonely and ugly. I feel like I'll never be loved. It's discouraging to see people enjoying with friends and people with clear skin. I'm trying my best to make things work, but I feel hopeless. I've been feeling a little suicidal lately. It doesn't help that childhood trauma due to abuse is creeping up on me. My counselor tells me that things will get better and that it will take time for that to happen. It's just that I don't see a future for myself. I'm utterly exhausted. Finals are this week and I'm super stressed. I'm scared I'll lose my cumulative 4.0 GPA, and I tend to base my self-worth on my grades although I know it's not right. Do you have any advice you can share? This marks the end of the video. If you liked my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot, see you until next time.